Introduction to Philippine Literature Why do we need to study Philippine Literature? I want you to ponder with this question and realize its essence as we go through our discussion. Let us start with defining this important term. The term literature is derived from the Latin word litera, which means a letter of the alphabet. And according to the website Britannica, literature is traditionally defined as a body of written works associated with imaginative and creative works of poetry and prose. And literature can be classified according to a variety of systems such as language, national origin, historical period, genre, and subject matter. The oral literature is handed down from one generation to another, then later on transformed into written form. Then the products of written literature are called literary texts. Why do you think people read literature? Let's find out now the reasons according to Baronda of 2016. And these are the reasons. First, to satisfy one's curiosity. Second, to uplift cultural understanding. Third, to escape from reality. And fourth, to fulfill one's desires and understanding. Let's proceed with the characteristics of literary texts. Literary text narrates a story. It expresses feelings, thoughts, and ideas which can either be based from the imagination or real-life experiences of the author or other people. It delivers significant information and crosses boundaries of time, places, cultures, and languages. Also, literature contains specific structure. Literary structure refers to the organizational method used in literature. Let's proceed now to the genre of literature. We have here two categories for our genre of literature, the general and particular. For the general, we have the oral and written. For the particular, we have poetry and prose. Poetry and prose are also known as two major forms of literature. Let's differentiate the two by starting with poetry. Poetry is usually written in lines and is characterized by having the element of rhythm, sound, imagery, and form. The main purpose of poetry is to express feelings, thoughts, and ideas. There are also three types of poetry. Narrative poetry, dramatic poetry, and lyric poetry. Narrative poetry. This poetry tells a story and has the elements of a narrative such as characters, setting, conflict, theme, point of view, and plot. For the examples, we have epic, ballad, magical tales. Dramatic poetry. This poetry is an emotionally appealing drama written in verse that tells a story and is intended to be recited or sung in front of the audience by a character speaking in poetry. For the examples, we have dramatic monologue and soliloquy. The main difference between a monologue and soliloquy exists in the listeners. A monologue is intended to be heard by others and a soliloquy is a portrayal of thoughts of the character. 
Lyric poetry. This poetry is the most common type of poetry that focuses on expressing feelings rather than telling a story. Examples of this are haiku, ode, elegy, sonnet, and song. Let's proceed now with prose. It applies a natural flow of speech and grammatical structures, which are mainly consisting of complete sentences arranged logically and sequentially in a paragraph form. The two types of prose are fiction and non-fiction. Let's differentiate the two. Fiction is a product of the writer's wild imagination and creative thinking, where the characters react to the conflict and various issues central to the main idea of the literary work. Other examples include short story, novel, play, legend, and fable. Nonfiction. It is inspired by real events where the writers aim to present, interpret, or describe experiences based on facts. Examples include biography, autobiography, narrative essay, memoir, and diaries or journal. Now take a look at this table to summarize the major forms of literature. 